This episode brought to you by Noble Gold. One of the first commitments made by the new administration is the $2 trillion spending on environmental concerns. With renewables like solar panels, wind turbines, and even batteries for electronic vehicles, the use of silver will soar. But of course, we don't have enough silver to cover the demand. They said it would take 5.62 million tons of silver to meet all our energy needs. The world's current known official silver reserves that can be assumed to be recoverable from mines is estimated to be less than 600,000 tons. And that is good for investors and the price of silver. If you're thinking of an IRA or a 401k, now is the time to look at silver. And this month, with every gold or silver IRA, they're giving away one of these incredible five ounce solid silver Apollo 11 memento coins with every silver IRA that started. Click on the Noble Gold link in the description or pinned comment right now and learn more about future proofing your investments. Debate over the Star Spangled Banner is nothing new. Historians have argued that a third stanza, the one we don't sing, actually has racist lyrics in it. And also, guys, I have to remember the author, Francis Scott Key, was in fact a holder of enslaved Africans. Hello, welcome back. I am Drone Tech, and we're here today for another embolism-inducing clip from the DNC slash CCP media complex. If you enjoy my content, feel free to hit that like button. It really helps this channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the new content. Now, let's take a look at what is plainly an effort to erase American history and traditions. A major reversal overnight for the Dallas Mavericks. The team played the national anthem, giving in to pressure from the NBA. Is it just me, or does it sound like the scandal is that the NBA played the United States national anthem? The team played the national anthem, giving in to pressure from the NBA. The league cracked down after owner Mark Cuban decided to stop playing the Star Spangled Banner at his team's home games in November. There are quite a few people that voiced their their concerns or really their their fears that the national anthem and did not fully represent them, that their voices were not being heard. How does the national anthem not represent them? Are they not United States citizens? Well, that anthem represents all of us. Who in the world would have a problem with the national anthem? It really makes you wonder. There's only one country that I can really think of that comes to mind that might have some kind of a vested interest in erasing national traditions like the national anthem. China. We all know the NBA is close to China. They like to look the other way when it comes to their concentration camps. I guess the enemy of my enemy is my friend because apparently the NBA has a seething hatred for the United States also. Okay, so Mark Cuban decided that he wasn't going to play the Star Spangled Banner anymore because some people on his team are idiots and told him that it's racist. Then predictably, people on the left applauded the move. Then kind of surprising to me, the NBA reversed it and demanded that he start playing it again. Then what you see is the mass media coming out and actually circling the wagons around Cuban, arguing that the Star Spangled Banner is actually racist and should go away. Debate over the Star Spangled Banner is nothing new. Historians have argued that a third stanza, the one we don't sing, actually has racist lyrics in it. And also, guys, I have to remember the author, Francis Scott Key, was in fact a holder of enslaved Africans. Well, that's a flawless argument. The Star Spangled Banner needs to go away because of a verse in the song that we don't sing. And then, of course, the other obvious reason we have to get rid of the Star Spangled Banner, because the author of the song was a slave owner. You see, this is the dangerous road we're going down because you could use that flawed logic to tear down all of American history. I find it funny that if you look back at that infamous press conference with Trump after Charlottesville, he made the argument that Thomas Jefferson and Washington would be next on the chopping block because they were slave owners. I remember he asked Jim Acosta, are you a fan of them? Well, guess what? They're going to go away because they were slave owners. Acosta mocked him as well as the rest of the media saying that Trump was such an idiot to compare these traitor Confederate generals to our founding fathers. Were the media just being complete idiots or were they providing cover for their left-wing extremist foot soldiers? The people who are driving this agenda on the far left. A bunch of socialists, Marxists, and communists of varying degrees. And think about it. Do you think it's a coincidence that China keeps sending its spies to get Democrats? 
Appreciate, though, Mark's efforts to try to raise the conversation and bring awareness to what many people believe is still an injustice in this country. And I think he was just trying to shed a light on that. Yeah, but yeah. Given now it's become a polarizing thing. That's right. I mean, that? It's not my favorite yeah. song, to be honest. It never has been. America can oh. be your favorite country without it being your favorite song. That's right. <laughs> Who do we have on this? <laughs> it's not your favorite song. It's our national anthem. What is this guy talking about? Yeah, I get it that it's a pretty recent tradition to play it at sporting events. It started during World War I and then really ramped up during World War II, and then we basically just kept doing it. But I fail to see what's wrong with that tradition. It brings all Americans together, gives us a national anthem to unify around. But these people are not about unity. All they're ever trying to do is divide this country. Who is it that benefits from this division? Who is it that benefits from American history being wiped away? China. Think about it. Who is it that really benefits from this country being divided? China. And look at the groups who are really working to divide it. The media backs groups like Antifa and BLM. They provide them cover. These groups want to do things like eradicate what they see as Western prescribed standards. Things like the Western prescribed nuclear family. I just, I really don't understand what's happening here. Why are all these people suddenly hating things like the national anthem? When did that become a thing? And make no mistake, it won't end there. They're after everything. It started with the Confederate statues, then moved to founding father statues, then the Betsy Ross flag then the then Mount Rushmore believe me in the end they're gonna go after the American flag and everything that we know as American we are gonna have to make sacrifices we are gonna have to change our conversation we're gonna have to change our traditions our history we're gonna have to move into a different place like I mentioned earlier, this has only been a tradition that really started during World War I. But if we give up to that, we're just going to give up to everything. And you got to look at the people who are really pushing this agenda. They mostly all come from an ideology that's been at war with this country for decades. Given the CCPS climate that seems to be growing in this country and these brazen power grabs by the left, I'd say communism is on the march in America. You can help me to expose them by supporting this channel using one of the links in the description or the pinned comment. So, uh, yeah. I guess that's all I have for this one. Make sure to hit that like button on your way out and I'll see you all next video.